Following the success of our recent location filming, we have come today to the seaside. We are here in lovely Portobello because this week the recipe is about fish and fish comes from the sea. Almost Not Fife. this very bit of sea. And behind me is the magic kingdom of Fife, which at the moment is like a myth to us. But we'd love to get back to the magic kingdom of Fife and we will back to the magic kingdom of Fife soon. Maybe we'll get freshly caught fish from the magic kingdom as opposed to other fish. From fishmongers. Yes. Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books, another week in the fiction kitchen. This week I'm going to do a recipe that isn't actually in one of the books yet, but probably will be quite soon because it's one of Karen Perry's favourite dishes, obviously. It's another traditional Scottish dish, the wonderful soup known as Cullen Skink. It doesn't sound very nice, but it tastes wonderful. It's basically a, a soup that revolves around smoked haddock, and you need to get good smoked haddock for this. Uh, the nasty bright yellow stuff that you get in a lot of uh, supermarkets and sometimes even in fishmongers is horrible and you shouldn't use it. What you need to try and get is the authentic one like this, which we get from our local market. All it contains is haddock, salt and wood smoke. So to that we're going to add a melange of vegetables. A melange? A melange, yes. Um, but we're going to start off by cooking the haggis. <laughs> We're not going to start off by cooking the haggis. Oh. That's <laughs> next week. <laughs> We're going to start off by cooking the haddock. We're going to lightly poach the haddock in some water. So what I'm going to do now is put my peony on before I start throwing things around that will splash with the foodstuffs. I see that you've got the the vegetables you've got there are the only vegetables you knew about when you were growing up. Uh, pretty much those were the vegetables of Fife when I was a child. The vegetables of Fife. Because it came as quite a surprise to you when you went down south and discovered that there were other vegetables. When I went to Oxford, I was shocked by the range of vegetables. I didn't know there were such things as sweet corn or uh, mushrooms that didn't come out of a tin or peppers or celery or watercress. Yeah, but discovering celery wasn't quite such a good... It wasn't so good for me because I am allergic to it. Yet, yet more of your intolerances. It's, it's really quite remarkable. You've got, to be, you've got to distinguish between an intolerance and an allergy. An allergy actually has a nasty, uh, immediate kind of physical reaction. Well, so does your, your so does your intolerance, yeah, to be yeah. fair. There's a difference between them. So now I'm going to add a bay leaf, uh, which gives you just that interesting wee bit of flavour. Add a bay leaf, and then I'm going to cover this with water. You don't need to measure the water, basically you just need to cover the fish. It smells very fishy. That's because it's fish. And I'm going to put that on the stove to boil. So while I'm waiting for the fish to come through the boil, I might as well start prepping my vegetables. So I'm going to start with shallot. This is a rather large shallot. But so normally I would probably use two small medium sized shallots. But this one's a big one, so we'll just go with it. Be careful, you've already cut your hands to pieces doing my hair. Yeah, my hands are a bit messed up. There's lots of uh, nicks from cutting the hair of the professor who you can't actually see with her semi-magnificent haircut. Um, we've cut each other's hair over the last couple of weeks. And uh, I have to say that it demonstrates that Joe is actually better at cutting hair than me. Quite a bit better at cutting hair than me. I've got more difficult hair than you. Well, it's nice of you to acknowledge that. No, it's true. I'm really struggling with the shallot for some reason. So it's just a rough cut. I mean, the yeah. shallot, not my hair. <laughs> yeah, the hair as well, really, but yeah, basically. There's bits, there's still bits of... Oh, it's just, gosh, this shallot's weird. Does it matter? Is it not? Is it going to be... Is it, how long is it in, going to be cooked for? It's going to be cooked till it breaks down. Pretty well, well, it doesn't matter then, does it? Just watch your fingers. Matter. I mean, I think you well, did... the most... You did do a good job with my hair, but I have to say, when, when Wendy cuts it, I don't end up with blood on my face. 
Both her blood on my face. I don't think I've ever cut a shot up worse than that. There's a bit on the floor, by the way. I knew there was a bit on the floor. Not much. Okay. You're not going to add it? What, a bit on the floor? I think it's past three seconds. I bet you gotta cook it. Right, so that's the shallot butchered. I'm gonna take a leak. <laughs> Do you want me to stop filming? <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> I'm wasted behind the camera. Even at the drink again. See what I did there. <laughs> Touche. It's not been my finest hour for the chopping today. Do you need more coffee? Probably. I'm just going to put this in the food bin. So the water's coming through the boil now, if you can see. And what I'm going to do now is take this off the heat and set it to one side. That's one side. So now we take the soup pan and we'll do the next part of the soup. I'm putting a wee bit of smoked rapeseed oil in here, mostly so that the butter doesn't burn. Not our lovely wild garlic oil. Not our lovely wild garlic oil because that would be too strong for the delicate flavours of the soup. It doesn't smell very delicate at the moment. Everyone's up for tick. Put oh. the butter into the pan with the oil. And to that we're going to add the shallots and the leeks and then after them the potatoes which I cut off. I think I've just cut this off again. <laughs> You're gonna have to wear those chainmail gloves you were talking about last time. Yeah, I am, I think. So that's just melting really nicely here. First we add the shallots. Give them a tip that we've come to know so well in this kitchen, a wee rummel about in the pan. There are lots of variations on this recipe. Um, some people use onions, some people use as I've done a mixture of leeks and shallots. Um, some people, when it comes to this stage, use Jerusalem artichokes mm. as well as or instead of potatoes. But I haven't got any Jerusalem artichokes today, so I'm just going with potatoes. Does it matter what kind of potatoes? It doesn't really matter what kind of potatoes. I usually leave the skins on because the vitamin C is in the skins, allegedly. And as I've said before, by the time we get them from the supermarket, they've all been pretty well washed of the more obvious elements of pesticides and herbicides that get used in the fields. So I've put in here those three small to medium potatoes, actually four now because I thought I needed a bit more. Let's have a wee look at what's going on in the pan. The onions, the shallots and the leeks are starting to soften. Time 
And again, rumble about, rumble about, rumble about. So this is pretty much what it should be looking like right now. And we're almost ready to add the liquid from the fish. Which is what this mixture of vegetables will be cooking in. Mm. Onion and fish. The house has never spelt better. Now let that cool down. That's lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> if you could see my camera person's face right now, lovely would not be the word that described. It certainly smells fishy. So I think what I might do right now is open the back door to have a little fresh air into the kitchen kitchen. So we can see this has come through the boil now. I'm going to put it in the oven to cook. But first of all, I'm going to give it a wee grind of black pepper. It doesn't need any salt because the fish gives it sufficient salt and if you need more seasoning, you can always add it later. But the wee bit of pepper just gives it an extra bit of oomph, as we say in the business of cooking. You're in the business of cooking now, are you? We're in the business of cooking. You make yourself a few YouTube videos and you think you're a chef. No, I don't think I'm a chef. I think I'm a relatively competent cook. In we go to the bottom oven. If you're doing this without an agar, low heat or in a very low oven. For about half an hour or so, basically till the potatoes are soft. So, it's time to take the soup out of the oven and check the potatoes particularly. Out to come. Just a wee bit of potato here. Looks good. It's going to be hot. Well. Mmm. Mmm. That's what I did. So, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to extract some of the vegetable mixture uh, because we want the, we're going to blend the soup, most of the soup, but we want there to be some texture. You want some vegetables to retain their identity. Something like that. So I've got a ladle here with a hole in it, which isn't very good for dishing up soup, but it's quite good for getting bits out of the soup. So I'm not taking a huge amount out. Just a ladle full, maybe a wee bit more. That's probably about right. Just a wee bit more for luck. So I'm going to set that to one side for now. And then I'm going to take the fish. Sitting here, poached in the pan. And I'm going to divide the fish too, roughly, into, into two. So these bits of fish, I'm going to flake into the reserved vegetables, just do it with your hands, just like that. And as I say, I set that to one side. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nope, nice. you've still not got Nigella. So those are the reserved vegetables. Those are fish and vegetables. And so the ones in the pan are the extrovert vegetables? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Help me God. So into the pan now we're going to put the rest of the fish to join the vegetables. And there's no bones? Pretty much not. Is it pre-boned? Or is it just yeah, it comes, it's, I mean, it's a spineless it's, fish? It comes filleted. It's, it it's not a spineless fish. It's a haddock. Nothing spineless about a haddock. Could you use other smoked fish here? You could, but it wouldn't be Cullen Skink. Okay. The essence of Cullen Skink is that it is smoked haddock, which is very much a feature of the northeast of Scotland. And Cullen is, of course, in the northeast of Scotland. So Cullen is the place and Skink is? The Skink. <laughs> I'm going to wash my hands now because they're all fishy.
So I've added the fish to this and now I'm going to take a bit of nutmeg. See here, what started off as a whole nutmeg and has of course been used a little bit. Um, and I'm going to just grate some nutmeg in because I think it adds a little, I shouldn't say quoi. Nutmegginess. No Scottish. Not um, megginess. Not megginess. Um, incidentally, if you're interested in seeing some of the variations on the Colin Skink, I could recommend to you the Guardian journalist Felicity Cloak, food writer. She has a regular column called How to Make the Perfect Whatever, and her description of how to make the perfect Colin Skink draws on a range of other people's recipes, as most other recipes do. Uh, so it gives you a chance to see what you might like to experiment with with this dish. To this I'm now going to add milk. Now in our house we generally use semi-skimmed milk or as I once said in the grocery semi-skilled milk um, but I think the semi-skimmed milk makes this a bit thin so I'm actually using full milk for this. Some people use cream and I think that makes it too rich so into this I'm going to put 500 mils of whole milk. It's a lot of milk. It's about a pint in old money. So I'm going to stir that in and then I'm going to return it to the heat. I'm not going to bring it to the, to the boil, I'm going to take it off just before it boils as we don't want the, the milk to curdle. So what I'm going to do now is stick this back on the heat. Mm, 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 mm. I'm trying, what can I say? You're very trying. Trust me. So predictable. Trust me, viewers. So, we're going to let that do away, as we say, and we'll be back later. So, I've let this simmer for a bit in the oven, carefully not boiling it. And I've let it cool down a wee bit so that I can put it in the So, how long did you have it in the oven? I had it in the bottom oven for about an hour. But you can do it for a bit less than that. I only had it for about an hour because I was doing a Zoom call with somebody. So, I'm now going to blitz this in the blender. Ladle, blender. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, you've got a whole lot of it down the outside of the blender. And some of it down your t-shirt. Well done. But it's a wipe clean. Wipe clean t-shirt. Uh, I, I will say at this point that uh, I know from bit of experience Stripping. that uh, you shouldn't put hot soup in the blender goblet. I have a wee scar just there. Wee red scar. Which one? There. There. Thereabouts. Uh, which happened when my made some soup and put it in the blender before it was cooled and the top blew off the blender and I was completely coated in soup and that one particular bit on my face scarred so That's weird, it was just that if you were completely covered in soup you just got one tiny scar I've not been good at plugging in the kitchen appliances in this series yeah, That'll be my fault somehow Yeah I could have done that on, on double speed if you'd not spoken during it. You do that in the next jugful. Oh god, there's going to be more jugfuls. That looks like a milkshake. That's right, a fishy milkshake. <laughs> Just what you've always wanted. Do you need a hand? Eh? I just wondered if you needed a hand. No, don't need a hand. You don't want to blitz the bay leaf. I don't want to blitz the bay leaf. It'll be a short intermission while I fish out the bay leaf. There we go.
what's in the jug. And then we will add the fish and the vegetables that we saved from earlier. So there's a wee bit of texture in the soup. And we go back in the pan. And there you have it, Cullen Skink. Bring it back up to the heat before you eat it. And make yourself a nice big bowl of that for your tea. And would you sprinkle anything on it? A bit of pepper, maybe. Chopped chives? Chopped chives, if you fancied it. Um, I like to keep it simple because I love all these subtle flavours. A wee bit through it, running through it. Maybe chipotle sauce? No. Where do you get these bad ideas from? Not everything tastes better with a bit of chipotle. No, it doesn't. Strawberry ice cream does not taste better with a bit of chipotle. So, as I say, there you have it. Cullen skink, a broccoli of soup. Enjoy. <laughs>